take five. Hello, welcome or welcome back to TSC Talks, the podcast where we talk about tuberous sclerosis complex and other related issues such as intellectual and developmental disabilities and autism. My name's Jill Woodworth and I'm your host. Thanks so much for tuning in today or whatever day it is when I get this posted and you're listening. On the podcast, we have Jay Isham. Phenomenal Jay, another passionate and devoted employee. I hate, I can't even really say the word employee because that just really doesn't give uh, credit to the people that work at the TSLIs and are devoted to the cause of improving quality of life, raising awareness and finding a cure for tuberous sclerosis complex. So anyways, Jay, Director of Communications in 2004, named VP of Communication Strategies in 2013. More than 30 years experience in healthcare nonprofit and nonprofit organizations. He directs the TS Alliance's expansive communications, planning and execution efforts, branding, messaging, and marketing strategies, evolving digital communications, technology, including social networking, videos, and interactive media, writing and editing, media relations, and event promotion. Whew. During his tenure, the monthly unique visitors to the TS Alliance website have more than doubled from an average of 17,000 in 2004 to 40,000 plus today, and there's probably more now. So he's incredible, and I don't think you really want to hear me talk talk much more about him. Uh, I will share that what I, I enjoyed hearing was how it became more than a job for him working at the TS Alliance over the evolution of his career and his experience with the people in the community that are dealing with TSC and just his first impressions of that and being at a conference and watching the parents witness their children having seizures because it was very warm and Jay just taking the whole thing in and being like, holy moly, not only does this impact the children, but the, the whole family. And he was, you know, he became all in, as you guys know. So I'm going to stop talking and I may insert some other information in here, but I want to get on with the podcast. He lives in New Mexico. He has four mini pinchers. He plays guitar. Oh, yeah. He recorded the intro for the podcast. That's his original music. I asked him to give me some music for the intro so I don't have to use uh, stuff that isn't unique and creative. As I ran out of my cousin's original stuff, he can, you know, write some more, witty, and we'll put that in. But for now, and, and anybody who has music that they have written that is non-copyrighted that they'd like to submit for the music that I use for intros and outros, I would love it. So Jay is a a uh, musician and plays guitar and bicycles. And again, he did the intro and I will p- post it on the site if you'd like to download it. I think that Lisa can do that. And oh, by the way, he mentioned that, uh, or Lisa mentioned that she wasn't anticipating editing his podcast in crying because she thought it would be more of a factual interview, but of course it made her cry. So that's my cell. Take it away, Jay. Hello. Jill here, hoping that you'll consider making a small donation to the ongoing production efforts and support this podcast on our website, tsctalks.com. There's various places to press the donate button and use PayPal. We'd appreciate your support. We've produced 50 episodes with more on the way, quality content that's affecting change in our TSC and broader communities. So please consider making a donation. Would really appreciate it. Thanks, Jay, for being on the podcast. I'm more than happy to be here. Awesome. You are the Director of Communication Strategy at the TS Alliance. And Actually, it's uh, Vice President Communication. What did Strategy. I just say? Director. Jeez. Dire- <laughs> my, my, my original title was Director. Okay. So you're the, you're the VP of Communication yeah. Strategy. All right. So, yeah, just tell me a little bit about your current position, and then I want to have you walk me through your career, you know, your life is leading up to the TS Alliance. Sure. Happy so, to do it. Okay. Um, so in my current role, I started at the TS Alliance in 2004 as a senior director. Of, well, actually, I was director of marketing and communications, and then at some point, 
that became senior director. And then in March 2013, I was promoted to vice president mm-hmm. communication strategy. And so within that role, I'm responsible for, you know, developing, integrating, and implementing all kinds of communications, marketing, social media, public relations, media relations, branding, all of those things. It's a pretty broad category, but, you know, I'm basically responsible for the outward look, the brand, how we communicate. Um, how we, you know, present information uh-huh. in all kinds of formats at this point. And, you know, we do printed materials and those traditional pieces that have been around forever, brochures, uh-huh. magazines, all of those things. And then, of course, social media and electronic communication starting around, I want to say 2009, 2010, uh-huh. Yeah, you know, I, I'm trying to think back. I mean, you know, that was kind of when MySpace was around. And right. you know, I know I know about MySpace because I, you know, I'm a guitar player and used to be in bands. And that was kind of how bands <laughs> communicated really? online. Yeah, you know, and then suddenly Facebook came around. And I clearly remember walking down the street with in D.C. at one of our board meetings We had hired this outside marketing firm at the time to help us with some messaging and branding. I remember walking down the street with him, and we were talking about Facebook, and we were both kind of chuckling because MySpace had literally just folded. And we were both kind of like, ah, this Facebook thing will probably come and go. And, you know, here we are (laughs) many years later, and it's the behemoth that it is. And, you know, it's certainly – a huge and important and critical tool for the tuberous sclerosis alliance and the people we serve you know it's got a oh, lot of absolutely. challenges we can get into at some point if you want but it's um you know one of the things i think we're really good at at the ts alliance is getting feedback from our constituents and we get it anecdotally all of the time of course but we certainly you know we do formal surveys every few years and the most recent one You know, our website used to be like the number one place people go for information. And um, now it's kind of even with Facebook. And so it really changes and challenges us on how we communicate because, I mean, I, I think we do, you know, a really good job of pushing out information on social media and getting feedback and all of those things. But I think, you know, one of our ongoing challenges is you look on our Facebook discussion group, there's, I think there's like 9,500 ish people on there now from Mm -hmm. all over the world. And we don't have a good way to know how many of those people are in a database at work. And so we want to communicate with people outside of Facebook as well, if they want us to, Mm -hmm. Um, But we have to get them into our database to do that. And that's kind of an ongoing challenge. We've, as you probably know, started an electronic newsletter. And we have a new podcast that complements what you're doing. And, you know, so we put out tools for people to sign up for those. And we get some new people in there every time we do that. And then, you know, we have tried some things on Facebook to, you know, beef up our mail list, so uh-huh. to speak. We we have those awareness cards that oh, those are great. We, we offer every few months, and you know that was somebody's idea. Mom said, "Hey, do you have anything I could hand out in a grocery store when my child melts down so people don't stare at uh, me?" It's yeah. literally what happened, and it was such a great idea, and. So we did it, and then we realized that would also be a way to capture some new people for our database. Uh So it kind of worked out well in both regards. Yeah, it's got to be hugely challenging just how quickly things change in social media. And Facebook is just such, like you said, a behemoth. You can't live with it, live without it. But it's 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 got to be frustrating. I mean, just my own use of it has morphed and to the point where you know using it for kind of business type work stuff i don't even want to go on it socially pretty much (laughs) yeah yeah no i get it and our group has grown so big and 
I can give you a little background on it. We kind of just started that group back in when Facebook, you know, first came around. The discussion I, group I, you're talking about. Yeah, I, you know, I threw together a page, and at one point, the page kind of morphed into a discussion group. And then at some point, Facebook came in and said, you know, because at the time, the group and, like, our quote-unquote corporate page were one and the same. Right, right. That's what I – I didn't even notice that it had changed for a long time. Yeah, and then, you know, however many years ago, Facebook made a decision that you have to separate your corporate page from your discussion. And so we had this discussion group, and for – Many years, it was an open public group. So that yes. basically meant that anybody could come on and read the page, whether they hit, were involved with TSC or not. Mm-hmm. Um, we, at the time, you know, our, our thinking, and, you know, now I look back and it was flawed, but, you know, our thinking was that if, if we keep it open, it's a way to educate anybody right. and everybody about tuberous sclerosis complex. Well, over time, it became very clear that people wanted to have more, I'm going to use the word intimate, that's probably not the right word, but wanted to have more intimate conversations. Yeah, I know what you mean. Just a privately. little, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we started getting some messages behind the scenes many times over the years that I would reply to people and tell them, you know, we're trying to increase awareness. Uh-huh. And this is why the group's public. Yeah. But a few months ago, it became very clear that it was time to close the group. Uh-huh. And so we did it on a Saturday morning. And I think we added literally several hundred people within a week. And I can't tell you how many thank yous we got for doing that. And so, you know, I read everything on that group and the new names that are there now having conversations have increased exponentially and the types of conversations have gotten much more detailed, I think. And Uh I think it's a great thing that people can now write openly and not really worry about you know, somebody else reading it on their wall. And right. Like I said, that was one of those things looking back. I think we should have done that earlier. It's but. hard to know, though, because I get it. Like you want, I've always kind of been about that, or especially early on, like, oh, my gosh, I, getting the word out just seems so important. It is. And, you know, the ongoing challenge with any rare disease, I think, is how do you break out of the pack? And yeah, you know, there yeah. there's seven thousand rare diseases. Seven thousand. I, I say this all the time. Everyone is worthy of funding. Of everyone course. is worthy of everybody knowing about it. And having said that, the challenge for any rare disease, as I mentioned, is how do you reach people beyond the people who are affected or have a family member affected and either are a coworker or friend. So you have kind of those two or three degrees of separation right. that, that you can reach um, fairly easily, but how do you get beyond that pack? And that's just been the biggest challenge for us and for others. And, you know, I think once we, you know, we've known for many years that research into tuberous sclerosis complex can help other diseases. Right. But when we distilled that messaging down to TSC as a linchpin disease and all the research we do about TSC can benefit cancer, diabetes, autism, that's when, you know, we, the light bulbs kind of went off. We knew this intuitively, but we weren't like. Didn't know the right language, the way to put it out there. Yeah. Yeah. So we, you know, we started doing that a lot more and I'm not sure how much that's helped us with the general public, but certainly within the research and healthcare communities, it's really helped us up our visibility and the visibility of TSC in general, huh. I think. So, you know, it's an ongoing challenge yeah. and the flip side of it is it's not just the general public that we want to get to. We want to get to people who aren't diagnosed yet. And there's certainly, you know, I heard recently 